Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today I am going to talk to you about my Giglio Giravondo. So after I posted about my B6 Apunto Undyed, I did get a comment and asking about my Giravondo. Uh, I realized from that comment that I actually haven't talked about this on my YouTube channel, so I figured why not do it now since I've had ample time to really take it in and um, I actually enjoy using it. So I never thought I would be in a Giramondo. Um I did try the Traveler's Notebook a long time ago and then I kind of really found a lot of peace in a bound notebook. So this happened because, you know, as we've stayed home and I'm like on social media, my mind wanders and I came upon this guy. Um, I was fortunate enough to have someone reach out to me and tell me that they wanted, uh, they wondered if I would be interested in this because they knew I like undyed leather. So that was through Instagram. So I never really understood the ISOs um, because I always wondered if people actually reached out to others about their ISOs. But I did put one out and someone reached out to me and now I have this. So this is the undyed leather, which is hard to find when Jillio runs out of it. The previous owner had this for a while and didn't really use it. I think it was a premium good deal. She said that most of the time it was spent inside the box. So it does have a slight patina to it because as I have learned, Giglio undyed leathers will patina regardless if you use it. Um, so just keep that in mind but it does age slower than if you had your hands on it and using it on a daily basis. This is what the leather looks like. The Giramondo is a very basic slab of leather with some eyelets. And is that the word? I, I could be saying that wrong, but um, you have your elastics and they usually match. I switched out this elastic because the one that was previously on there was pretty loose. So I had received this one from Maria at, I forgot her Instagram name, but she also makes notebook folios and traveler's notebooks. And um, she, I had bought one from her and I loved this green color. I just didn't want it on my larger notebook. So I'm using it for here, and yes, in my opinion, it can get in the way, depending on how big the uh, knot is. And I know that there's some, like, what are they called? Like the flat, I forgot what you call it, but I think Chic Sparrow uses it, and it's like a flat thing that you can put on here to where you don't have that knot. So this is a thicker elastic and it did take me some time to get it in here. So that's why it's so big, such a big knot. But I did put this notebook in here, which did come with this leather. She, the previous owner did give me a really nice Tamoy River notebook insert, something I wasn't expecting. So I kept it here in this back secretarial pocket. And the main notebook I'm using is the Sunkeen notebook. It is in grid paper. And then on the left side, I just have just some decor, a couple of stickers, and that's pretty much it. I do have a if found card with my information on it and a picture of some donuts I made. I was really excited about that. So I'm just keeping it in here. Um, my name, one of my like memory task cards. It's clear and it has like that design on it. And then some stickers and then another little 
artwork I created, and an Ollie clip here. So it's pretty simple. In fact, I don't really need these here, but I wanted to fill them up just because I wanted to be able to look at something nice whenever I open it. Now the leather is very flexible. It is called Epoca leather. And here is the maker stamp here. One thing I noticed, and I don't know if this is something that they do with all the Germandos, they do have a new designed Germando, which is like, I think it's the deluxe or something of that name. But they don't fold the leather over on the Germandos, and it is like, I forgot that name, but like, I don't know if it's burnished or if it's just painted edges. But um, it doesn't bother me, but it is something I, I notice uh, in comparison to their other products. You still get the squared corners and the lovely leather, so there's that. Also, this notebook did come with some bookmarks, which is pretty much made out of the same leather as this, and or the elastic, sorry. I took it off because they just looked flimsy to me, and I don't really need it because I am using clips and my only clips to get to the pages that are important to me. So to get started, I did review Soom Keen on my channel before, and I think I did briefly talk about this, but I am finally using it for real, for real. Um, all the notebooks are numbered and you have room to like title whatever your notebook is for, something I still haven't done, um, but it, it, that's okay, it's not a big deal. They also have personal information sheets. So they have the table of contents and I am using that. And then they have extra pages to write down more information. Then they have a thing here on your, like a map, time clock. And then some line pages. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit distracted because my kids are coming inside from outside. Okay. I really enjoyed Ink Imperfections here on YouTube. And so her ideas have really, you know, they really speak to me. So I am using a key similar to hers. I did do some extra art on this side, so I covered it up. And pretty much this whole notebook is what I'm calling the list planner. It's all my lists on a daily basis because I feel like I don't have that space in my Hobonichi Cousin at the moment. So that's pretty much how I'm using it and how I'm labeling it. So we have a future log where I've only put in birthdays and anniversaries and then kind of like a month, year at a glance. So I started this in August, pretty much the end of August. I wanted to keep the date there. And then I continued on until I ran out of space on the page. So that leads me to March. Will this notebook last till March? Honestly, I'm not sure. But if it does, that's great. So I started off with September, a uh, month on two pages. And pretty much I just put important dates on this uh, monthly calendar. If I have notes, I will put them at the bottom. One of the things I realized when I was using this is that my pen I was using was bold, which is what I wanted, but it kind of ran through both pages. So I glued these two together. There was a page in between and you can kind of see the lines behind my first page. So again, I wanted to include the last couple days of August just to kind of, you know, get a feel for it. So I write down all my to-dos and then again, I go back to my key, which I still haven't memorized quite yet. And I will put that there. I do not designate 
one page for one full day. It's just these two days I did want them on separate pages, but for the future pages I end up just kind of continuing on where I left off from the previous day. I did try a weekly view and I realized it's, that's just too much. This is just for listing and so I kind of kept it that way. Um, I do put in my grocery list, things I need to buy, I want to buy, some ideas, and then you can see how I just continue on. I did try another weekly which I thought would be nice if I made it smaller because then I wouldn't feel so bad if I didn't use all the space, but yet it just looked too scrunched up so I decided to really just scrap the whole weekly thing. I also started using this for tracking like my shop orders and my totals for the day. And then I even tried to split up my dailies into smaller sections so that I wasn't using one or two days per page. And I didn't like that either. So I scrapped that again and just went back. So here I really liked Ink and Perfection's idea of things that you're waiting on. Like if you do have packages, but not just packages, I do things like if I'm waiting for an email, um, if I'm waiting for like a credit from something I bought, that's where this goes. So I can keep it all in one page and then everything else will just transfer over into the next month. And this is something that I do put in my contents in the front table of contents. So I do put my want list and then waiting on so at the end of October, I will continue this on another blank page that would be further up, probably around um, the November pages. So I do put my grocery list in here. I do like the idea of writing down grocery lists of things I need each week and then throughout the week adding to it. So that's uh, something I have kept from when I was using my rings. Then I have a want list, and then in between here, I have these pages stuck together, but I have a coupon list. So I'm continuing on grocery list. I did try to use a different pen. You can tell it's bolder, and I typically like bold pens, but in this case, I like keeping it at, I think this is the 0 0.3, yes, 0 0.3 size. So when I prepped for October, I didn't make anything like special. Um, I wanted to do like a summary of September, but I kind of do that in my Hobonichi a little bit. Um, so I didn't think it was too necessary as I don't refer to everything in this book alone. Um, so I just started to create my October monthly, which is a month on two pages. I really like now that I've started a Patreon, I really need to keep track of things, um, and set schedules for myself, um, deadlines for myself to make sure that everything I say that you're getting in your tier is happening. So I'm writing down things I'm doing each week and I felt like this is perfect because this notebook has dotted lines that reach all the way like to the top so I can separate the days of the week and then on the left side it also has a section um, so I can actually put week one, week two, week three, week four, and week five. Now at the bottom I do put my major tasks, the biggest things that need to be done for the month. I haven't yet figured out when I really want them due, but this on the side does help me kind of stay on track to see what I am posting and um, like what's missing. Then I have a goal section and then I decided to do a, I forgot what you call this. I should have looked it up. <clears throat> But I decided to write down like a list of 
the days of the week for the whole month and then what day it lands on and then write down things that are due that is outside of like Patreon. Since I do have a monthly spread in my Hobonichi cousin, I do use that for like big tasks on that end as well. So I didn't feel like I needed it for both, but now that I've started a Patreon, this will become very helpful for that and for my tasks that I need to complete for on the daily. So again, writing down my daily tasks. And to be honest, I don't do this every single day. Some days just take off and go and I don't even have a chance to look at my notebook until the end of the day. And when that happens, I will go through and think about all the things I did do and what I haven't done and then fill it out. Um, I don't plan ahead in here. Most of that stuff that I know I need to do, if it's something that is due, should be on this little calendar or my Hobonichi cousin. Um, this is just for like daily tasks. When I wake up in the morning, ideally open this up and start writing them down. Things I need to get done um, throughout the day. I do look at this a couple times throughout the day when I am on track with everything and, um, and then I will add to it. Then by the end of the day, if and when I have time, I will go through and start checking things off. If it doesn't happen at the end of the day, then it happens the next morning. So I do have like my little October monthly here and I figured I would just keep that here. This was one of my freebies for the month of September in my shop. But yep, so this is where I'm at. It is Saturday and I do like to write down like if my day goes into the next page, I do like to write it down um, saying that Saturday is continued into this day on this page. And that's pretty much all I have in the backpack. It does have like a guide to their numbering system for this company, which is located in France. I have talked about my pen tests and then I am actually starting to keep numbers in the very back because I no longer carry my A6 rings with me right now. I've started to carry this one around and I realized that I'm missing a lot of like personal information. And so I started to put that information in the back of this book. That is pretty much it. The leather is holding up really nicely. It is like if I put on lotion and I feel like I'm marking it up, I see some dark spots, it goes away by the end of the day. So I don't know what is going on with this undyed, but it's awesome. Um, there's a little bit of some marks here, but they tend to go away with me just like rubbing on it. Um, yeah, I really like it. There's, it does scratch pretty easily, but you know, if you rub on it, it kind of goes away. I really like it and I can see it staying into 2021. I hope it does. This is my Klenna Energel and it is in the point three as I mentioned earlier. It is a Pentel. I got this from Amazon but they also sell them at Jet Pens and at Tokyo Pen Shop. I really like this one, the 0 0.3. Because the paper is not Tomoe River, I feel like it. it's a good I don't feel like I'm stabbing my paper because the point is so fine but it writes really nice this paper takes fountain pen paper but I just don't have the patience for fountain pens like when it comes to my planning I want to be able to write things down and half the time I'm writing stuff down but I have to get up to attend to my kids so I usually stick uh, fountain pens with my journals because that's when I'm journaling, I usually have the time to sit down and relax and do it and not be on the go. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give me a like. And for those of you who are new to my channel, consider subscribing. Also, I do have a Patreon now. So if you're interested in more videos from me, journal with me, 
how to's on hand lettering and art and shop discounts and even a sticker subscription then definitely join me over there and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye!